With over 12,000 cards available for players to choose from, the majority of which saw their initial debut in the anime, you might be inclined to believe that every card from the anime has received a physical print. But the truth is, there are still hundreds of cards from the anime that have never transitioned to the TCG or the OCG. It's almost as though they're being kept hidden. Are these cards simply too powerful to introduce to today's metagame? Today, we're uncovering the secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! In recent times, when we in the Wild West of the TCG receive a long overdue anime card import, we don't tend to get the full package of an archetype. We may get one or two cards from a previously anime exclusive archetype, which ends up ruining any potential for those cards to be a meta success. But when you look at where and who these archetypes come from, you'll often find that they come from side characters who had little to no relevance to the series. And that's exactly what we'll be diving into today as we learn some forbidden jutsus from the masters of Forgettable. Starting with Vivian Wong, whose cards appear unassuming at first, but I've no doubts that they would be used for all of the wrong reasons. Vivian's boss monster, yeah remember when that was a thing, is a level 7 light warrior effect monster with dark magician stats named Dragon Lady who has the following effect. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card can only be special summoned with luminous clouds. You cannot special summon any other monsters the turn this card is summoned. Once per turn, you can select one spell or trap card on the field and destroy it. This card cannot declare an attack the turn you activate this effect. It's giving limited MST formats for sure. I can't really say I'm a fan of these regular effect monsters from the anime whose summoning conditions mimic ritual monsters, but let's see what we're working with. Luminous Clouds is a normal spell card with the following effect. Tribute one Master Kianshi and one Kung Fu Nyan Nyan. Special summon one Dragon Lady from your hand or deck. I say again, it's just a bad ritual monster. Spoiler, Vivian's archetype is based around warrior monsters, so the inclusion of Master Kianshi, a level 4 zombie beater, is a questionable inclusion, but I suppose it fits the theme. Kung Fu Nyan Nyan, the other monster needed to tribute, is a level 4 earth warrior effect monster with 1700 attack and 1000 defense, and the following effect. During your standby phase, if this face up attack position card did not attack during your last turn, it gains 300 attack. If this card attacks after gaining attack this way, it loses 300 attack during the end phase. This is a monster that you're forced to run out of necessity for the boss monster and not because you wanted to. It's searchable, which is a plus, but I can safely say that Nyan Nyan will never become an archetype with how this card works directly against its thunderous counterpart. I was going to save the next card for last in Vivian Wong's showcase, but I need to touch on it now. Remember how I said these cards would be used for all of the wrong reasons? Flying Dragon Whirl, a quick play spell card with the following effect. Select one face up monster you control and send up to four dragon type monsters from your deck to the graveyard. That monster gains 300 attack for each dragon type monster sent until the end phase. As if dragon monsters needed another buff in the form of what is basically an in-theme painful choice, we now have this, a new bane to the existence of every player still recovering from post-traumatic dad disorder. And to top it all off, we've completely abandoned the deck this was meant to be played in and opted for a completely generic dump. You're scaring me. You're scaring my children. Getting back on topic, Snowfall Sword is a quick play spell card with the following effect. Activate only when a warrior type monster you control that is equipped with an equipped spell card attacks and your opponent activates a spell or trap card. Negate the activation of that card and destroy it. I'm not interested in this card because it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but because it's a spell card that negates, and I feel like this solely exists because of the memes surrounding Mystical Space Typhoon. And the ADHD has kicked back in with our last two cards. Lightning Saber, an equipped spell card with the following effect. The equipped monster gains 300 attack. At the end of the damage step, if the equipped monster destroyed an opponent's monster by battle, you can half its attack until the end of the battle phase, and it can attack once again in a row. Average at best, but I could see this card being experimented with in early equip-based OTK strategies. And last from Miss Wong is Mystic Eruption, a quick play spell card with the following effect. If a spell or trap card was destroyed this turn, inflict 1000 damage to the owners of the destroyed cards. Again, another card that probably has no place in a modern deck, but may have been a fun option for early burn strategies, or really any 
any early deck with this one where earlier formats were so much slower. Ultimately, I wouldn't personally say that Vivian Wong's Dragon Lady Karate deck has any merit. The cards have little to no synergy with each other, and I'm almost inclined to say that they're not an archetype by definition. Our next duelist being Jean-Claude Magnum, whose only showcase was during a filler duel against My Valentine, surprisingly has a far more synergetic deck. And I say surprising because we're dealing with quite a few normal monsters. Let's get the vanillas out of the way because they're mentioned in other cards of the deck. Kanoichi Ayame, the Ninja Girl, a level 2 water warrior normal monster with an abysmal 300 attack and defense. This one's all but useless because it never comes up in card effect. And Ninja Soldier Katana, a level 3 wind warrior normal monster with 400 attack and defense. Keep this one in mind, also keep in mind that Jean-Claude's entire deck bears the ninja name. So any current support that we have for the real world ninja archetype can potentially support these cards. Ninja Commander Ikusa, a level 3 dark warrior effect monster with 700 attack and defense in the following effect. When this card is summoned in face up attack position you can special summon one ninja soldier katana from your hand in face up attack position. Although everyone would prefer that this would summon from deck, katana can't be considered a garnet being that you're going to be praying to see these two cards in your opening hand or that you have a search card to grab katana. It could be worse though, and it's as basic as field presence comes. And a monster that can help to better facilitate field presence is Ninja Commando Kabuki, a level 3 dark warrior effect monster with 700 attack and defense and the following effect. When this card is summoned, you can special summon one ninja monster from your hand or deck. Much gooder. If the Hokage blessed your opening hand and you find this and Katana, you have immediate access to a Link 3 and Raten the Heavenly General. And after you Link Summon, you can start regenerating your field presence by tribute summoning Ninja Master Shogun, a level 5 dark warrior effect monster with a less than respectable 1600 attack and defense but an effect that at least somewhat makes up for the stat lines of an okay level 4 monster. This card can only be summoned while a Ninja Commander Ikusa and a Ninja Soldier Katana is in your graveyard. When this card is summoned, you can special summon one Ninja Soldier Katana and one Ninja Commando Kabuki from your deck in face-up attack position. Need I make it clear that none of these effects are even soft once per turn, so the constant recycling of cards is sure to make for a good time. And of course, no ninja is prepared for battle without their very own weapons, such as a kunai, a knife, a shuriken, or a kite? Great Kite of Ninja, an equipped spell card with the following effect. Equip only to a ninja monster. Thank you for clarifying, I was about to equip it to my Aitsu. Negate spell or trap cards that target the equipped monster. It cannot be selected as an attack target. You can tribute one monster except the equipped monster to allow the equipped monster to attack your opponent directly this turn. I do like this one. Giving any of your ninja monsters this level of protection, regardless of how fragile that protection is, is appreciated. But it definitely feels like a I'll take what I can get kind of card. And our final card in this week's episode is a staple from the Duel Monsters era, where every archetype needed their own in-theme battle trap as opposed to running the generic counterpart. Ninja Smoke Ball, a normal trap card with the following effect. Activate only during your opponent's battle phase, and the battle phase immediately. Negate attack. It's negate attack. Granted, this doesn't have to be activated in response to your opponent's attack declaration, but it's not as though there are many other windows in which this card would be activated. Nonetheless, for all of my archetypal deck purists out there, this is your card. When it comes to full archetypes that have remained exclusive to the anime, cards like this have me wondering what the best means of importing them into the TCG would be. On one hand, I don't necessarily want them to occupy 10 slots of potentially higher rarity in a new animation chronicles. But on the other hand, I also don't want them to be given their own dedicated structure decks when another viable existing archetype could benefit from new cards in a dedicated structure deck. Well, I guess there's always speed duel boxes? No! God, please, no! But that's gonna wrap up this week's episode of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Drop a comment down below. Is there a series of monsters that you want to see covered in this segment? Let me know down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.